Uh, let me introduce to you Dr. Uh, Stephanus uh, Sneiman. Uh, is an occupational medicine practitioner and health professions educationist uh, residing in Cape Town, South Africa. His unwavering passion lies in empowering individuals to break free from the shackles of disease, drugs, and despair through the adoption of a healthy lifestyle. As a visionary founder of Fire for Life, Dr. Sinman leads an interdisciplinary team in the offering of a groundbreaking online program. His comprehensive initiative is specifically crafted to aid individuals in reversing diabetes and tackling conditions associated with insulin resistance. He is also South Africa's voting member of the World Health Organization's Functioning and Disability Reference Group. He is also an advisory board of the Journal of Interprofessional Care. Over to you, Dr. Stephanus. Uh, his topic for today, as I said, that it is diabetes missing link. Please go ahead, sir. Thank you so much for the for the welcome, and thank you so much for the opportunity to join you from Cape Town. It's a it's a sunny summer day in Cape Town, and uh, I wish I can be there with you. Uh, it's one of my dreams to, to visit India one day. So let's get going. Before we start, I've been tasked to unveil a mystery, the missing link in diabetes, but I need you to help me. So quickly, Please take out your phone uh, and get ready, okay? So you, you need to go to a website shortly, and then you need to help me to find the missing link. But let's just get everybody on the same page. You may know that currently one in 10 people globally are suffering from diabetes. That is about 530 million people around the world. By 2050, one in three people globally will suffer from diabetes. Already today, we have one in three people suffering from sugar-induced health problems or insulin resistance, cardiovascular disease, hormonal issues, digestive issues, polycystic ovarian syndrome, diabetes, obesity, infertility, Neurological issues, depression, bipolar, schizophrenia, and a lot of cancer. Seven of the top 10 causes of death globally can be linked to sugar intake. So, before we get started in how to solve this problem, what's the missing link? Quickly take a photo of this QR code or type in this link uh, and answer in a few words, describe what you regard as the missing diabetes link. I give you a minute to quickly go to this website or to and to answer the question. In a few words, describe what you regard as the missing diabetes link. I've shared the link in the chat and check that. Okay, good. Let's see. Great. Keto detection. Gut health, inflammation, lifestyle, sleep, exercise, weight loss, physical activity, inflammation, circadian rhythm, lack of awareness, weight training, insulin resistance, inflammation, vitamin D, emotional stress, digestive disorders, Knowledge, poor eating habits, insulin, it's not sugar, lots of carbs, searching for solutions, obesity, good fats, adrenal dysfunction, early diagnosis, the role of the adrenal glands, unhealthy diet. Wow, okay, <clears throat> you're getting there. <laughs> So, if we look at 
the screen and uh, what you are sharing, you can see it's a lot of things. The problem is people are trained because people are told they are in a diabetes prison. The question is, how do we break out of the prison and the shackles of diabetes? And if you ask me, what's the missing link? I would say it's a bolt cutter. Something to cut open these rails so that you can break three from the jail that we are putting people in. So let's have a look at all the chains, all the links that must be cut by our bolt cutter. And afterwards, I'll ask you again, and then we see if we can uh, agree on the missing link or missing links to stop the diabetes pandemic around the world. First of all, I think the first chain, the first link that must be cut so that people can be set free is this nonsense that patients must navigate islands of care on their own. About seven, eight years ago, I had shortness of breath, pain going down my arm, and I was very fatigued. Well, as a medical doctor, I thought, mm, this may be angina, perhaps a light heart attack. Uh, it may be a wise thing to go and see a physician. So I went to a friend of mine. He examined, examined me, and then he took out his prescription pad. So the ECG was normal. So he wrote, uh, well, he's going to refer me to a neurologist uh, because he's concerned about the pins and needles in my fingers. He's referring me to an endocrinologist because he just diagnosed diabetes and to a psychiatrist because he thinks I have anxiety. He referred me to a biokineticist and he gave me one referral letter to take to all of these people. And then he took out his script and he wrote my diabetic medication, my blood pressure medication, my cholesterol medication. And I just realized this is not working. It was that evening when I phoned one of my friends, Doc Frank Miller. I said, Frank, you've been telling me as a doctor for many years that I'm a walking time bomb. I'm not looking after my own health. Please explain to me again, how do you reverse diabetes? And then we gathered an interprofessional team around me so that we can all work together with one plan, not seven, eight different plans. So let's start and see how we can work together from various disciplines because we, not one profession on its own can assist a patient to reverse diabetes. Many disciplines and many areas of life are needed to do this. I mean, it's, it's great. I know in India, you have the Indian Interprofessional Education Network um, who's, who's focusing and striving to, to help and bring interprofessional education to the fore in medical schools and in practice. The other chain that must be cut is we must think that health professionals must be in control and that we will help people to reverse diabetes. Well, if that's true, we are failing dramatically. Despite all the new medications, despite all the research, despite all our specialties and Schools and schools full of endocrinologists and dietitians. Everything is just going south. It's just getting worse and worse. In 25 years, one in three people will have diabetes. <laughs> we are not in control. So stop to think that we must be in control. No. We must allow patients to be in control and to be empowered. Here you can see Luwazi. He cut open this link and he was set free. 
his endocrinologist was furious when he started to implement some lifestyle changes, when he stopped his insulin injections and all his other toxic big pharma drugs, and just by making a few lifestyle changes, reversed his diabetes within three to nine months. Over a period of more than a year, he lost more than 60 kilograms and is now free from all drugs. He fell asleep at work. He wasn't able to function. Now he's studying and doing his master's degree. He's a new person, enjoying his family, enjoying life. He was empowered with the correct knowledge and encouraged to take control of his own destiny. Another chain that we need to cut is to think that you can do it alone. You know, most people that came into that come into our program they should actually all receive an honorary PhD in diets because all of them have tried so many diets. I, you, you, they tell you about the diets and I just say, yes, yes, yes. I don't have a clue what they are talking about. All the weirdest things they've tried before. They feel like they are failing and they think when you tell them they can reverse diabetes and they can succeed, the, whole, the first thought that surfaced in their minds, I'll fail again. No, you can't do it alone. We need community and accountability. To become sugar sober, you need, in a sense, the AA approach, where people are encouraging one another, where you can share. We, we have a, a community of about 600 diabetics. And when one person uh, is having sugar cravings, they can share that on a group and people are encouraging them to persevere and just to hang on. When someone wants to do a 72 or a two-day fast, they say, I want to do a fast, but I'm afraid of it. And people encourage them and do it together. So community and accountability is so important. It takes me 17, one, seven hours to reverse somebody's diabetes. That's my time as a medical doctor, not the time of the dietitian and the psychologist, my time. Now, I don't have that time and people don't have that money. But if we can do it together in groups and in a community, we save time, we save money, and we bring in the importance of doing this together and keeping one another accountable. We call it to come alongside people. So we are all alongsiders. We're not in control. The fourth chain that must be cut is our bio biomedical approach. Now, obviously, I'm now preaching to the wrong crowd because you're already converted. But the biomedical approach focusing just on a diagnosis. It's not about diabetes. Diabetes is just a symptom of insulin resistance. You know that, like a fatty liver. The biomedical approach is a simplistic, reductionistic approach to health. What's your symptoms? What's the clinical signs? Now let's make a differential diagnosis. And now there's three options. I write you a script, or I cut it out of the scalpel, or I refer you to a psychologist. It's all in your head. Well, that's the basis of medicine. Life is not that simple. Let's embrace a biopsychosocial spiritual approach. The complexity of life, the beauty of life. Often we're afraid to involve and to think about all the complexities impacting on what somebody eats, who's making the food. Is there money available? Do they have access to the food? What about the rest of the family? What about the, the fact that they're working night shift? All those confounding factors that's making it difficult. We have to embrace all those things. Most people don't want to reverse their diabetes because they want a low blood sugar. No. They're sick and tired of feeling sick and tired. 
They want to play with their kids again. They want to see their grandkids. They want to run on the beach. They want to work productively. They want to have energy. Those things are not within a biomedical model. That's why you need functional medicine, the biopsychosocial spiritual approach. And in our practice uh, and around the world, we use the ICF, the International Classification of Functioning Disability and Health, which is a great framework. The ICF framework helps you, if you want to reverse diabetes, to take all the variables in consideration and how everything is impacting on everything so that you can get to the source of the problem, not just managing symptoms and putting a plaster on an abscess. <clears throat> the fifth thing that we must get rid of, the link that must be broken so that people can be set free, is the diet heart hypothesis. Ansel Keys is responsible for genocide. He's a villain. He's, he was the guy bought by big pharma, big agri and big food to say that cholesterol is the problem and that people must stop eating fat and that everything must be lean and that we must increase and eat grains. The McGovern report in 1967 was, was based on his fake research. Um, and since that day, uh, we see what's happening in the world. People are getting fatter and fatter and sicker and sicker. No, it's not about cholesterol. It's not fat that's the villain. It's insulin resistance, stupid. Prof. Tim Noakes wrote a fantastic article. It's insulin resistance, stupid. But he actually exposed uh, the heart uh, diet hypothesis. Gerald Raven and John Yatkin, they are the heroes. They are the people ridiculed by science. Um, Raven actually should receive the, uh, <laughs> the Nobel Prize for medicine for the work he did. John Yatkin was sort of vilified when he published in the 1960s his book, Pure White and Deadly, The Thing About Sugar. Um, and, well, we know today, and you know, that people must be reminded that it's insulin resistance and it's not the fact, the fact that they are eating lean and no fats. Excuse me, sir, 10 minutes to Yes, go. yes. Just yeah. remind yeah. Yeah, yeah, I see, I see. The sixth, the sixth thing is uh, carbosis. Yeah, you can see 60, 70% of this food pyramid is carbohydrates. Everything breaking down to sugar. Now, if you have diabetes or insulin resistance, so if you're in carbosis, if you're burning on carbs, it's like burning on newspaper or, you know, it, you, you become carbohydrate intolerant. You can call it carb addiction, a sugar allergy or pre-diabetes. But we need to move away from having our population and a third of our population currently with insulin resistance, they can't burn carbs as their primary source. This is what happened in the West with the Western diet since we changed this in 1977. We need to move into encouraging people to burn on fat, to be in nutritional ketosis. That's the way to reverse insulin resistance. If that's meat or other animal products, if it's healthy oils, that means not processed oils like sunflower oil or canola oil uh, and non-starchy vegetables. So that is the important thing, is to get people into nutritional ketosis. You may say, but how can we do this? Well, if you go back, here we are in a cave nearby our place. They did research there 160,000 years ago. What people ate in Southern Africa was basically protein, meat, and non-starchy vegetables. 120,000 years ago, they ate the same thing. Protein, fats, and non-starchy vegetables. And up to a few thousand years ago, that was the main human diet. We need to stop calorie counting. All of our patients 
busy with all the weird and wonderful diets. Everybody is telling them to count your calories. That's not sustainable. I haven't seen one patient who reversed his, his, his diabetes by counting calories. Well, rather give them food that will make them full, real energy dense, real food. And a very simple and fun way is just to use a plate method where people can say half of their plate is non-starchy vegetables, uh, about, you know, up to between in the hour and 25 minutes, your fats and your proteins and your starchier food, about five to 10 percent, five minutes on the clock. OK, and that will be your your yellow vegetables like uh, carrots and pumpkin and corn and stuff like that. The other false science is to eat six meals a day if you're a diabetic. That is nonsense. So now you're just keeping the insulin levels high all day long and you're increasing the insulin resistance. No, let's rather get people to burn on fat then you're not hungry anyway. So because we would like them to start to fast. Fasting is one of the key components Components to reverse diabetes. Fasting is the greatest remedy. Remedy. The physician within, Paracelsus said, uh, one of the fathers of medicine. Hippocrates said, fasting helps the body heal itself. Stop prescribing. As doctors, we don't learn how to de-prescribe. But why on earth must we give people insulin when they are insulin resistant? It's like giving somebody peanut butter to heal a peanut allergy. You're making him sicker and sicker. Just because you want to control the blood glucose, well, that is just treating the symptom, but you're making the person sicker. Forgica, oh, this wonder drug, which is actually causing bladder cancer. And, you know, if you take Forgica, you must take sugar and carbs. Otherwise, you you'll get or can develop diabetic ketoacidosis. So imagine you approve a drug that say you must take sugar, otherwise you will die. If you, that is an unethical drug. Also, if you stop this drug, if you deprescribe it, you can expect the patient to have crazy high glucagon levels. The whole glucagon metabolism goes haywire for a month or two, three, before it settles down. And also be careful for example, the new kid on the block. Uh, we get a lot of reports on a lot of our patients that's getting sick on it. Initially, great, they lose weight. But the moment you stop the Zempec, the insulin resistance returns. Rather embrace supplements. Vitamin D is the big, big, big thing to reverse insulin resistance. We aim for a blood level of, of 80 nanogram per, per milliliter or uh, 200 nanomol per liter, depending on the units you are using. Magnesium, bicarbonate. There are so many supplements uh, that you can use depending on the patient's budget. But if it's a very low budget, just start with your vitamin D3. And then obviously probiotics, because we need to Stop gut inflammation. One of the first signs of, uh, of insulin resistance is reflux or acid, uh, irritable bowel syndrome. You know all the inflammatory gut situations. So it's important that we care for the microbiome. Give your patients a good probiotic. Encourage them to take fermented foods like sauerkraut, kombucha, kefir, kimchi. Um, and when nothing helps, it may be worthwhile to do an analysis of the microbiome. Uh, we work closely together with Dr. Sabine Hazen. She's doing a fecal matter transplants. So that is an, a fantastic fantastic solution to so many problems. I mean, can you imagine, we just heard this week, she's doing fecal matter transplants plants on kids with autism, and within a, a week, the kids 
don't have any symptoms anymore. So there's so much of the microbiome that we still don't understand. And to analyze the microbiome and to make sure that you have diversity is so important. Most diabetics don't like to exercise. They were told, you're diabetic because you ate fat and you didn't exercise. That's the two main causes of your diabetes and your obesity. Nonsense. Eating fat has nothing to do with it. It's the carbs that you ate. And exercise only contributes a little bit to reverse insulin resistance. Rather encourage them to do simple exercises that you can do in your home. It's so difficult because you might have a diabetic who's running marathons and then you have a diabetic of 200 kilograms sitting in a wheelchair. So to prescribe and sitting here to say what type of exercise you must do is very difficult. That's an individualized thing. But you can do exercises just to reduce inflammation. Breathing exercises to heal the vagus nerve. Resistance training is more important than cardiovascular training in reversing insulin resistance. And lastly, you can't reverse diabetes if there's high stress and high anxiety. The most important thing when it comes to stress and anxiety, if you don't get deep, proper sleep for seven to eight hours per night, it's impossible to reverse diabetes. And there, sleep hygiene is so important. And obviously, we've, made, we've heard in the previous talk, importance of melatonin to have fun and laughter one belly laugh a day is fantastic and our psychologists also tell patients if you can have one orgasm a day also that is even better so fun and laughter is just so important to lower cortisol levels and lower cortisol levels means it's lower insulin levels lower glucose levels and you reverse it Food must be our medicine. Reversing diabetes must be fun in community. And then grounding on hormesis, cold water swims, your sauna, being barefoot on the grass. Grounding and hormesis is also very, very important. Excuse me. Sir. So, yes, with that said, I'm finished. Let's just quickly go back to this link. And you just tell me, what do you, it's now India link two. You can just scan this quickly. Yeah. You tell me after the past 20, 25 minutes, what do you regard as the diabetes missing link? Let's see what you are saying now. I've shared the link in the chat box. You all can Thank please. you. Let's see what you are saying. Ah, oh, the responses lifestyle, gut, sleep. Keep it coming. Laugh, stress free, they are important. Managing yourself, accountability. Overthinking, important. Relax, fun, community, accountability. Ah, you see, things are changing. Well, now, if, if you look at what you see on this screen, it looks more and more like functional medicine, a biopsychosocial spiritual approach to reverse your insulin resistance. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you Good. so much. Thank yeah. you so much. Yeah, thank you so much for your remarks. And uh, you have been so stirring and have made a lasting impact on us on the knowledge that you have imparted in terms of diabetes. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you.